Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blabbercast. I'm your host Cameron, and with me as always is my co-host and author of The Nicest Parts of Hell, Billy. What's up, Billy? What's up? Going back into Alien World. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be diving into the 1995 cult classic. That's right, everything's a cult classic here on Blabbercast. The 1995 cult <laughs> classic Species, starring Ben Kingsley, Michael Madsen, Alfred Molina, Forrest Whitaker, and Natasha Henstridge. Um, this was directed by Roger Donaldson, written by Dennis Feldman, and is not bad, uh, especially for the time. Uh, this was a movie that, uh, as a young male caught my attention because it had that cool sci-fi action horror thriller thing going on and they really hop on so and in the form of natasha henstridge who was like 20 19 20 years old when they shot it about 21 when it came out so uh, pretty cool do you remember seeing this in the theaters I did. I remember uh, it too. Yep, because yeah. I remember when French kiss when the uh, French kiss happened. I remember him saying, "That's the worst French kiss sack I ever had." And a couple <laughs> people in the vicinity laughed at that. So I do remember seeing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I. I saw this in the theater as well. Uh, this is a pretty cool movie. Um, so the synopsis uh, basically in 1993: Search for Extraterrestrial Life. A transmission is received detailing an alien DNA structure along with instructions on how to splice it with human DNA, because that's a good fucking idea. Right. Uh, the, the result is Sill, a sensual but deadly creature who can change from a beautiful woman to an armor-plated killing machine in the blink of an eye. Government agent Xavier Fitch assembles a team of scientists and mercenaries to locate and destroy Sill before she manages to find a mate and breed. And being a hot blonde in downtown LA, that's pretty much a given. So, right, um, it's happening right now. <laughs> happening right now as we speak. So, movie opens up um, to, I guess, uh, tween Sill, uh, the that uh, alien hybrid that's mixed with. Uh, was it the alien DNA with the human DNA? And you get this uh, cute little girl who's played by Michelle Williams. I thought she looked really familiar when I was watching this movie again. I was mm -hmm. like, God, I, who the hell is that? I, I had to look that, and it was Michelle Williams. So. Yeah, but she's on the train. That's where I was. Oh, fuck, it's Michelle Williams. It took me a while. Oh, really? Like, oh, yeah, you actually, yeah. It took me a second. Good. I didn't notice. I was like, fucking familiar. I'm like, yeah, oh, Michelle have, Williams. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of her movies, but um, I mean, she's obviously great actress actor excuse me and uh so that's pretty good I, I i wasn't able to place i had to look it up but uh so the movie starts and basically you're you're seeing the little girl alien and she's about to be killed by the government agents and she escapes the uh, the holding cell and escapes the facility ben kingsley who plays xavier fitch uh he's the director of the facility he chases after her in a suit and you can tell it's the late 90s because even the men have shoulder pads in their suits um <laughs> god I, I remember seeing that and it was just like wow men like voluntarily did that to themselves uh sill gets on a train uh sleeps goes to sleep and has alien porn dreams and kills a <laughs> hobo upon waking up uh and she steals some luggage and gets into like one of those uh, train compartments. You know, it's got like a little, you know, got their own little bathroom and a bed and stuff. And then she cocoons herself and she emerges as a hot as fuck blonde. A team is assembled to find her uh, an assassin, two doctors, and an emo. And then you see Syl. <laughs> <laughs> I love Force Whitaker. He plays the emo, like the, the empath, but no, I mean, come on. Yeah. Hey, Force Whitaker's awesome. He, He's, oh, yes. he's he's a fucking legend, um, but uh, Sil. Then you see Sil get a hotel room, and then yeah, the team goes on, um, Mister Science, and they try to grow another alien, and the hot doctor and the assassin almost die replacing a camera, 
Ben Kingsley lets them out of the room after saying he couldn't let them out of the room when the alien <laughs> thing grows and attacks them. I always thought that was weird. Well, like, I, I think, yeah, I think, out. yeah, I think Alan, I think it was at Alpha, Alpha, um, Marina, um, hits the button actually because they get Kingsley out of the way. He's just let him die, actually. He's like, oh, fuck him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like they got all the time in the world to let him out, but it's fuck it. I don't care. It's like, <laughs> I don't think he's just gonna, you're fine, bro. It's like, right. okay, fine. Anyway, they're right at the door. It don't take. A second, I don't know if I'm anyway. After that, Sil goes to a club, kills a kills a girl that twat swatted her. As we've <laughs> That's a female version of cock blocking. So. Yeah, twat swatted. I like that. Yeah. Picks up a douchebag, uh, kills him when she senses he's a diabetic, tries to leave him. Uh, she tries to leave and then she kills him when he tries to date rape her. And that's where we get the worst French kiss he's ever had of all the time. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Team find, <clears throat> finds a dead diabetic and realizes she's trying to mate and reproduce. This is bad when it's with aliens. <laughs> it's always bad when it's with aliens. Depends on your perspective. Though. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, but still. Wakes, Quite a way to go. <laughs> still wakes up in the diabetic. <laughs> trying. Still wakes up in the uh, di- diabetic's car after having had another wet dream about Zeno Morris doing it Zeno style. She wakes up and drives <laughs> off. It runs out of gas. She starts to walk and gets hit by a car. Yeah, and then a nice guy just happens to be driving by. Very happens, nice, polite man. Yeah, you know this is fiction because it's L.A. Nice guy calls <laughs> 911 on his absurdly 90s brick of a cell phone. God bless the 90s. Um, still wakes up in a hospital, and her shoulder's all fucked up, and she heals herself with Wolverine-like regeneration. Sill goes home with the nice guy that got her to the hospital. She tries to do him in the hot tub. Nice guy freaks out and gets killed for not putting out. Jesus. The team, (laughs) always one step behind, gets to the nice guy's house. Sill escapes the team again and takes a a very nice, helpful woman hostage. Uh, Sill has horny teen-like wet dream fantasies about Michael Madsen's character. Sill lures Sill lures the team to chase her and then fakes her death. Pretty elaborate scheme there. And then the team thinks that the job is over because Sill is dead. That's right. Michael Madison's not quite sure though, Preston. He's like, I don't know. Something not sitting right with him. Something not sitting right. Sill dyes her hair after that, goes to the black, and then ends up uh, banging Alpha, Alpha, eh, Alfred. Can I say Alfred? Jeez, Alfred Molina's character. <laughs> and then kills him for kills him for putting out just no police in this woman. Yeah. It's not too, it's not too alien, apparently. <laughs> not um, too alien. And I want to point out, too, the, the look on her face after he's like, I enjoy that immensely. She looks oh, so yeah. disappointed. <laughs> I think a few guys are going to be like, yeah, <laughs> fucker. Alien's like, well, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to kick out of that. <laughs> the team finds out, busts into the room. They see, it and he's dead. She just, boom, darts through in her... Uh, Giger, giger her, form her giger gear giger gear team you know, so they <laughs> chase her in the sewers yeah for us from the hotel I, was, uh, I, I thought that was weird i thought that was a little weird yeah that's whatever they go yeah. into a cave yes from the sewers and find an alien infant <laughs> and kill it fuck them kids still gets all motherly <laughs> pissed off and attacks so get shot in the head with a glock 19 and dies apparently not too much like a xenomorph a rat eats a part of sill that was cut off by Preston when the titty tentacles come out. What'd you call them? Mammary cannons. Mammary cannons. <laughs> and now uh, the rat is part alien. This sets up for a plethora of sequels or a really fucked up reimagining of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right. And you guys have a good night. <laughs> That's it. Credits. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, I, I mean, this is basically like a B movie, B horror sci-fi movie. And I think if you look at it in that kind of perspective, it was done pretty well. Um, I, I liked it. Uh, I bought the the DVD a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, not bad, not bad. It's fun. It, it was a fun film. I remember, I thought it was a shade. It's better than average. I, I thought it was a shade better. And then watching it recently. Funny thing is it's on Cinemax. I'm like, they have a streaming service too. For ten bucks a month, like what do they have to offer? Everybody has a streaming service. It's weird. I mean, they must. Have, they better have their entire soft porn collection. About two in the morning, remember that music? It's like meow. 
Skinamax. Yeah. yeah, I know what's going on in that room. <laughs> um, but I'm like, yeah, okay, so it was a, I'm just one week. I'm not paying them any money. But Joey, it was don't as, shave, <laughs> <laughs> mom. But it was. It just something felt like it was. I don't. I won't say anything was missing. It just felt like the directing to me felt off. Sure. The storyline wasn't bad. There was chemistry between uh, Preston's character. Let me get her name correct, at least for the uh, uh, Doctor Laura Baker Marge. Yeah, there was chemistry there. Um, I like Michael Maston a lot. I like Forrest Whitaker a lot. Alfred Molina hasn't become Doc Ock yet, but could use <laughs> right. those powers. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, I mean, for the team, Ben Kingsley's awesome. If they had, if they had to do, it's people ask me another Picard. I mean, he would have worked. I think if you had to fill in for some reason. Oh yeah, very like well, an evil yeah. brother. But he's he's fantastic. So there was a lot of positives to the film. I just thought, you know, it didn't hit like Alien or Aliens, obviously, but yeah, all good. Yeah, that's a that's a interesting point. It was um, didn't have that kind of uh, just didn't hit like Aliens. Yes. Yeah. Just probably this setting. Yeah. Uh, the writer. Well, one thing I didn't know about this was that H.R. Giger, he designed uh, the alien version of Sill, which I I guess I, I kind of remember somebody telling me about that uh, on the way to see the movie and whatnot. And that was kind of like the big thing of, reason, of why we had to go see it. So I like, guess another Giger thing. It's going to be awesome. Right. And, that was, uh, a, was a big draw. Yeah. It's and, a few million uh, right there. So, which um, means uh, that <laughs> this has direct ties to the alien universe. And this has been proven because I watched an explained video on YouTube that did nothing but speculate by a hypothesizing vague reaching connections. And <laughs> <laughs> also, this was, video was explained. Shot, it was explained by not explaining anything. Also, this video that I saw on YouTube was shot on a mining ship in France with perfect pronunciation from a non-native while they were sleeping and not mumbling. So, obviously, it's all true. There you so. go. <laughs> <laughs> a real factoid about this movie is uh, in 1995, in August 1995, a woman named Madeline Col Colint Colentino from Puerto Rico allegedly spotted a chupacabra. Which is supposed, which supposedly had killed several animals in the last months, and she later admitted that she actually described Sill, the creature from this movie, uh, and believed that the events depicted were actually happening in her town. Oh, wow! So this happened oh, wow. in um, Canovanas, Puerto Rico, and that's where I will be vacationing, so I can get the that human form. Like Colombian that. coca. <laughs> there you go. You know that shit's good. <laughs> and the human form looks like that so i'm going i'm fu i'm moving there, oh, so. <laughs> oh, there go. um and apparently michelle williams who played the younger version of sill she dislikes this movie so so much basically because she got a shit ton of bullying uh she received after the release of the movie which is, fucking this is weird. weird for what yeah i don't know like kids are fucking stupid fuck them kids hey, you're in a movie huh <laughs> dumbass yeah huh <laughs> Excuse me while I go play kickball, nerd. Yeah, what um, a geek. <laughs> Whatever. I'm getting the Sega CD. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got Sega CD. Stupid. Um, <laughs> fucking retards. Michael Madsen uh, signed on to do this movie immediately because it, it was uh, one of his first chances to play a heroic, uh, heroic role for a change. And Kind of makes sense because a lot of the stuff I remember him from, he's playing kind of a villain like Reservoir Dogs, Kill Bill, right? Yeah, you know, both of the balls. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. Then Dennis Feldman uh, had the idea for Species in 1987. He was worked on. He worked on another film about an alien invasion, so Real Men in 1987. Arnold Schwarzenegger was briefly interested in the script, but it was clear that the budget wouldn't allow allow that. Yep. So that would also tie into the Space Arnolds and the Black Goo. So there we go. So I think we're finding, we're actually figuring some shit out here. Um, <laughs> for the 100 views we get on this video. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. There's a great thing anyway. about being shadow banned by YouTube is you don't have to put on a lot of sunscreen. 
protect right. yourself from scans. You just, well, just, I'll put explained in the title like open another hundred. Explained anyway, uh, retrospective. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this is the theatrical movie debut of Natasha Hensrich still. I didn't think she did good. Like, she did I great. Wasn't, I'm doing great. Line delivery was good. Um, had a nice far away, just a look. Not just, you know, obviously a beautiful woman, but the look of like, an alien just studying things. I thought that was, she did a phenomenal job. Very good point. Yeah. H.R. Giger had envisioned more stages of Sill's transformation, but the film only employed the last one. Giger also envisioned Sill glowing with red orange heat, getting brighter and hotter as she got angrier and or, or felt more threatened. The studio claimed such a thing wouldn't be possible. And then when Giger had test designs made to show that, yeah, it can be done, they still said no. So it would cost more money, and they wouldn't be able to get enough of that pure Colombian coca. <laughs> You're dipping into our coca version. Hey, hold on, man. we got to have money for that. Uh, <laughs> Giger disliked the ending the screenwriters had created, feeling it was too similar to both Alien 3 and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Interesting. He eventually convinced him to finish Sill by a headshot and not with fire. Uh, Giger, Giger felt the flamethrowers were both you know, just too similar because they would used that. Um, and his attention with Sill was originally obviously to meet heat as a defense. Fire would be completely ineffective. So That's, obviously they kept that over, but not the glowing stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Man. Smart, smart, really smart guy, man. Not just a good, great artist, one of the greatest of all time, but smart. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Giger designed Sill to be translucent as well, and detailed animatronics uh, was made showing assorted internal details, however, because of how the animatronic was lit and shot, and the fact that the woman in suit and CGI versions of Sill could not be translucent, this detail was easily missed. So, um, gotta, I guess, pause it and look really hard with that. Mm. Uh, during the production, MGM opted not to shoot the nightmare train sequence to keep costs down for the coca. HR Giger. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, fucking studios. Getting in the way of our fucking art. HR Giger was not <laughs> willing to accept that, however, so he spent $100,000 of his own money to finance the sequence. That's a true damn. artist, man. That's a fucking true artist. Oh, that's true. He wants to see at least something done, and they're like kind of not. He doesn't have enough stroke, I guess. He should, though. But the movie's Talk original. Right? Yeah, for sure. The movie's original title was called The Message. The Message. So the Message. I like the change of species. The <laughs> premise is ex extremely close to the 1961 uh, TV series A for Andromeda, and mm -hmm. then obviously the alien design by H.R. Geiger. Obviously. Um, because we already said that. <laughs> we already said that. Um, I'm going to read it again. I'm not going to cut it out either. We're going to sit right in there. <laughs> interesting casting note. Like, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger was almost uh, going to be in this, Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan was offered a role, but uh, he couldn't do it because he was too busy shooting some like 007 movie, GoldenEye. So, oh, bad choice. How dare you? I know. It's, it's like, Jesus. Uh, I wonder if he would have been Alpha Molina's character, though. That's a good question. I tried to find what role he would have been, but uh, I couldn't find anything. I would think it had been that one. Is it the speech, you know, the Harvard thing, you know, maybe. Yeah, probably. They would have shown him the scripts, and he'd been like, see the last scene? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this movie instead. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go over here and make millions, and you have fun with your little, you know, angry alien woman movie. Oh, no, I mean, at the end, like, you know, so I got to kind of have some sex with her. I mean, it might be down for that. Anyway, go ahead. Heck <laughs> yeah, fuck James Bond. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be backwards. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Natasha Henstrich uh, was only cast to save money for the coca. It's not a movie <laughs> that calls for stars. Mancuso was quoted as saying, we're going to try and put as much money as we can uh, below the line and allow the effects and the creature to be the highlights of the film, said the guy that lost money. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, CGI was amazing, man. That's so really, anyway, go. Yeah, that's pure 1995 CGI. Uh, <laughs> Species was a box office box office success, making 113 million dollars worldwide from a budget of 35 million dollars, which industry industry insiders believe was in large part uh, due to Natasha <laughs> Natasha Henstridge's topless scenes. Um, Possible. That's, 
I guess. I, I mean, mean I, it, and I wouldn't be that much, but no, there's guys that go. So oh, this chick is, I mean, there is like pervy shit. It will happen like that. They'll go I, just for that. I mean, this is 1995, you know, right. I guess there was internet porn. But on dial up, you had to wait forever. <laughs> so I, it, I don't, I don't know if if that would be like, yeah, I got to go pay eight bucks to see an eight second scene of you know naked boobies. I don't know if that would really trans, you know. I mean, I'd hope not, but I'm sure it exists. I mean, I saw oh, an alien movie. That's cool. You know, I just that's my main reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. The scene uh, brought the film. A lot of publicity in the tabloid newspaper and lads mag lag lads mags of the time, porn. porn. But, <laughs> but despite being popular with cinema goers, the film was met with decidedly mixed reviews from critics. The success of Species meant there was a really bad theatrical sequel called Species Two, as well as two direct to TV sequels called Species Three and Species: The Awakening. I've seen all of them, by the way. Wow, um, God bless you. <laughs> I don't think they were that bad. To be I've seen Species uh, Two. I haven't seen the others. Three and four are worse, but I mean they weren't. I mean I was able to watch them. So um, I don't know. Fuck it. The original <laughs> film was also adapted into a novel and two comic book series. One of which was written by Dennis Feldman, who also penned the first film. There you go. And as far fetched as it might seem to most of us, there are those who believe that Species. Uh, The premise of the movie is completely true to real life. Uh, There are some who genuinely believe that an ancient, shape-shifting alien reptilian race has bred with humans in an attempt to rule humanity. Of course, this is mainly believed by the same motherfuckers that think Earth is flat. So. Wait, it's not. I thought it was. What the fuck? Oh, we're going to talk about that. I'm joking. (laughs) that's, That's like... 2010 now the big thing is a hot dog shaped earth so okay um well, i believe that sure. <laughs> fan theories i look i always like to look up the uh fan theories on, on some of these movies and i did come across one that uh was kind of interesting i had my own uh take on this is that mainly just due to giger and his influence in, in making the alien but uh my fan theory was what if this uh sill uh, was the uh, Wayland Utani's vision of weaponizing the xenomorph? So I thought mm. you know that would have been would have been interesting. And then there's somebody on Re- Reddit uh, said the species could have been linked, could be linked to the Prometheus movie from Aliens uh, as uh, the engineers attempt to kill off humanity by sending their demise via a DNA recipe of doom through a cosmic text message. Right. Um, that, say as I'm traveling, they can work on their glutes. Oh, yeah. just troll the motherfucker. I can't do it, but troll them. Uh, we like, can oh. send them this and then we can still work out. <laughs> <laughs> I can wear on my pecs again. Uh, <laughs> saves me so much time. <laughs> saves me Should so be... much time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's because we are so smart. We are engineers. <laughs> Oh God! We don't have mining ships at all. Okay. (laughs) Only Lamborghini ships. Only Lamborghini ships. (laughs) Fuck you. So anyway, here we go. Jesus, here we go. Off the rails, quick. (laughs) Here comes the vitriol. Okay. So final thoughts, Billy. There's a lot of positives going on for this film. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do not think it's bad. I think it's definitely above average. I think Natasha Hanser does a really good job. I think she's had a very good career. Um, whole nine yards, whole ten yards. She was great in those two. Yep. Uh, Madsen is played by Pre- Preston. His character is definitely cool. Comes off as a cool fucking dude. That guy's obviously a beast. He had a good chemistry with the uh, other the other chick. Uh, Alfred Molina, Doc Ock does a good job. I don't know exactly what the fuck they're there for though. I mean, it just seems like a team would just be like, oh, it's all military guys and rah, 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 shoot the bitch. Yeah, just bomb and everything, but mm, it had it had interesting things. It was cool. It's definitely a, it has that B movie feel. Uh, if you want to see some really C movie fills, watch a uh, three and four, um, <laughs> which I'm going to do now. Oh, they're yeah, yeah, they're not they're watchable. Two, I'll just get in. We're never going to probably cover two. I'm a doubt unless we get really bored. Uh, and I did think the sequel was 
watchable. I saw that in theaters as well. It was watchable. Um, you know, pretty cool shit. They had a little Mars mission and a nice little storyline. So cool. uh, they made, they got a franchise out of it. That's what, to me, they should try today, try to do something outside the box and see what it's sick. Sometimes you never know. You might find your next aliens franchise, but this did, yeah, it did something. It made a lot of money overall. Yeah. It spawned a, a couple of careers, especially for Natasha. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, all I got to say is a cool film for a sci- B movie, sci-fi B movie. Yes. Natasha Henstrich is hot. That's obvious, but it was still a fun movie. Perfect for a Friday, Saturday night. The fact that Giger was involved was evident and a cool touch. Not much else to really say. I mean, I love Forrest Whitaker, but some of his quote unquote insights were a little bit too blatantly obvious. Like the, (laughs) in the train compartment when, you know, uh, the team gets there and there's an alien cocoon cocoon and a dead body and Whitaker says something bad happened here but yeah no shit <laughs> I think I think Michael Madison's character does say that in yeah it, yeah it, it, that's the very next line but I mean like I was thinking it as he was saying it oh, okay. and then there's uh the dead guy's car that ran out of gas the dead uh diabetic douchebag date raper piece of shit oh no, no that wasn't the date raper that was the um that was the nice guy's car nope oh no was, you're right that was the date raper I'm yeah right. it's the yeah. black bmw she drives off, runs out of gas, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the team finds out, and they 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 they're they're notified that oh they found the, the the diabetic's car it ran out of gas, and so they go there, and then Whitaker's sitting in the car, and he says uh, she walked, she walked, she walked that way. It's like well yeah no shit man. I mean the bitch didn't fucking float. I mean, <laughs> well, she could have since she's an alien and obviously high on the black goose since it was never mentioned or explained, but it was just a little bit. Okay. Thank thank you for us. Just sit over there and, you know, here's a tissue crying to that. But, uh, so yeah, and I already mentioned the, my fan theory about the being Wayland Utani's idea of the perfect xenomorph that obviously doesn't, uh, pan out with the timeline, but, um, you want to read something? You want to read these, right? No, oh, <laughs> you want to? <laughs> okay, so I'll go over it again. Um, so the interesting idea that I had, like I said, was that it could be the Sill, could be the Waylon Utani version of a weaponized xenomorph. Uh, excuse me, a hot blonde morph, uh, horny morph, <laughs> titty morph, mammomorph, <laughs> or burrito morph. Eh, whatever. Since none of these morphs were explained, I guess they could exist, right, Ridley? Anyway, <laughs> it's a <laughs> deacon <laughs> it's a deacon it's a oh, fuck you you know what um, I real quick on the side of wrestling it's like when somebody <laughs> comes down the ramp you have jim ross like oh my god it's you know it's a wrestler you didn't really give shit came back that's what right. the deacon it's a deacon it's like who <laughs> rock come, did, did the rock come back now it's just i don't know who the fuck that is actually i'm like okay fuck it <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is weird that a government would be so eager to blend alien DNA with our own. I mean, all it took for them to be, to, to whore out humanity was a more em- economical version of gas. I mean, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. And also, too, she was just having um, rapid eye movements. Oh, let's gas her. I'm like, that doesn't seem like good enough. Just he's dreaming. <laughs> yes, Jesus, so cool. dude. I mean, she's safe and like, contained in there. Yeah, it's not the fact Bro, that she, she was grew, having fucking dreams. Okay. It, it's not the fact that she grew into a twelve-year-old in a matter of weeks. It's that she dreamt. <laughs> I know. Jesus Christ, guys! You guys, are, it's like okay, we got the we got the really economical methane gas. We can make money on that now. Kill that bitch before she has a bad dream or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Jesus. So, yeah, great movie, fun movie. Uh, obviously, a B movie, but uh, I like it so. We're good there. Same. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for sticking around. If you're new here, the five or six of you that are new, uh, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for uh, listening to our show. Drop us a comment uh, if you've seen this movie, what your favorite scene was, and uh, any stuff that we missed and fucked up, because I know there are some, because it is us. I'll Make sure to hit that uh, like button, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification so YouTube can turn it off and you won't get notified. And then, <laughs> 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 sorry, YouTube, don't poke the bear. And uh, yeah, make sure to share this uh, with your friends on your on your other socials. 
check out the link below. When you're not watching some of these movies, you can read The Nicest Parts of Hell, written by my co-host, Billy. Great fucking book. Get it uh, hardback, Kindle, or on Audible. So check that out. Any last words, Bill? Uh, that's about it, I guess. So, uh, yes. But, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. And um, next week, we are going to Terminator Land. <laughs> we will be back. No, oh, no more Arnold. <laughs> yeah, get ready for more Arnold impressions. And for all of us here at Labricast, thank you. Have a week. <laughs>